AI tools have been integrated into so many of our daily activities, professional and personal, that it can seem almost impossible to avoid them at this point. And so that's why I wanted to talk about the ethical and responsible use of AI in research grant writing. So I have been planning to do a series on AI in research grant writing for at least a year now, uh, but I wanted to take some time to observe and use some of the tools myself to see what the challenges, pitfalls, and opportunities are with these tools and where we need to be really careful, especially when it comes to grant writing in research. So before we dive into some of those considerations, I first want to talk about my philosophy for grant writing and how it informs my philosophy on AI in grant writing, because I think that's really important to set the stage for the conversation and obviously for you to decide whether you agree with me or not on this, right? Uh, I think it's fair to say that I am cautious and conservative about the use of these tools in uh, research grant writing for very good reason. But let me explain why. So if you have watched any of the videos on this channel, or if you have subscribed to my newsletter, and if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, I highly recommend that you do that. That's where all of my best stuff is. Uh, so if you are familiar with me uh, in either of those ways, you will know that my core philosophy when it comes to grant writing is that it's your job to communicate the value of your research to your reviewer. And alongside that is the idea that your research is a busy, stressed out, tired human who is volunteering to review a bunch of grants for scientific and technical merit. And your job as an applicant is to make it as easy as possible for your reviewer to see the value in the research that you're doing. And when we think about AI in that context, I mean, unless and until uh, AI becomes part of the scientific review process, I still think it's very important to make that human connection and generate uh, generate enthusiasm among your reviewers. Once that process, you know, if that process becomes uh, something that is put through an AI tool rather than a, a peer review process. We are, that is a different conversation. That is a different story. And you can just ignore everything that I've said here. But right now, scientific merit review still happens through a peer review process. And it is my opinion and also my experience that the most compelling applications, the most successful applications are the ones that generate enthusiasm among your reviewers. And that is a blend of having a really strong research idea, but also how you communicate the value and importance of that research idea. So that's the first sort of core philosophy that's underpinning how I'm seeing uh, the use of, of AI tools in research grant writing. The other philosophy that I have that's really important to this conversation is the idea that Writing a research grant is very much part of the research process. It is not an administrative hurdle that you have to overcome in order to be able to do your research. Writing a grant is what happens at the early stages where you are sharpening your thinking, where you are planning and designing your project where you are anticipating pitfalls and ensuring that you have alternative strategies, right? It's it's all of the work that needs to be done to set yourself up for success once the project is underway, right? And so assuming that it's just a bunch of checkboxes that you need to hand over to a funder to be able to get that money to do your research is the wrong way to think about it, in my opinion right? You can disagree with me if you want to, but 
uh, but then, you know, why are you here, right? So this this is how I see grant writing, is that it is a core piece of the work that you do as a scientist, especially when you consider it in those sort of early planning stages and the deep thinking that needs to be done to, to do it well. And of course, there's the communication aspect, which comes into play when you are preparing publications for peer reviewed journals, right? So you're getting early practice with that when you are preparing a grant application that can serve you really well when you're writing up your findings to, to submit to a journal, right? So for all of those reasons, grant writing is a core part of the work that you do as a scientist and should be treated as such. And so with those two foundational pieces in mind, let's talk a little bit about how that comes into play when we think about using AI tools in grant writing. And I know that it can be really tempting to use these tools because you think it's going to save you time. But I want to challenge that assumption in two important ways. Number one is save you time from what, right? So I just explained my philosophy about uh, grant writing being part of the research process, right? And so if we think about grant writing in that way, what are you actually saving time from if you are outsourcing this work to an AI tool? And it's important to consider that because most of the academics I know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, all of the academics I know are under tremendous pressure to fulfill the expectations that their institutions have for them around research and teaching and service and, you know, clinical work, if that applies, right? And so, again, it can be really, really tempting to find shortcuts to, uh, to be able to do more work in less time. But what is the problem that you're actually solving here if you're outsourcing some of the core work that you need to be doing as a researcher? And in my view, outsourcing that core work is solving the wrong problem. And the problem is not even a time management problem, it's a structural problem. It's those expectations that your institution has placed on you around securing grant funding while also doing all of these other things. And so to solve that problem requires something different. It requires uh, clear priorities, a clear understanding of what your value and impact is, and it requires some boundary setting. And again, I'm sure it does seem easier to just use an AI tool as a shortcut to avoid doing that more difficult and even emotional work. But again, if you outsource your thinking to an AI tool, what is left for you as a researcher? So I want you to consider that very carefully and challenge the assumption that you have around these tools saving you time, because what is it actually saving you from? The second challenge that I want to suggest when it comes to this idea of an AI tool saving you time in the grant writing process is, is it actually going to save you time, right? We, you know, at the time of this recording, we are still very much in the, uh, in the stone age of AI tools, right? And who knows how long that will last. Uh, the developments and improvements are happening very, very quickly. But at the moment, these tools are still pretty unreliable when it comes to uh, summarizing and interpreting and even uh, producing citations, right? And, you know, very famously, uh, that has happened recently in an HHS report where there were um, hallucinated citations, right? So that is still very, very common in terms of the output from most of these uh, AI tools that are available at the moment. And so if you are planning to use one of these tools to assist you in the grant writing process, to do that responsibly, to do it ethically, you are going to have to double and triple check all of those outputs. and my question to you is, is that actually going to save you time compared to writing it out yourself? 
So again, I think that this idea that these tools can save us time need to be challenged before we can think about using them ethically and responsibly. So I will leave you with that. And then let's talk quickly about some of the considerations uh, around using these tools ethically and responsibly. And, and we're just going to do this very briefly at a very high level because we will get into these in more depth uh, throughout the, the rest of this series. So number one, uh, and this should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, is that you need to make sure that you are in compliance with your institutional guidelines and the funders guidelines around the use of AI. So for example, at NIH right now, there are guidelines around the use of AI in the peer review process, but not for the development of a research grant. But there are lots of guidelines and regulations about uh, original research right? Uh, your institution might have its own rules and guidelines around the use of AI in grant writing. And so do not pass go until you are clear about what those guidelines are and what, what that allows you to accomplish with an AI tool. So that's number one. Number two is that if we think of writing more broadly than just, you know, generating text, AI can be used ethically and responsibly in some aspects, right? So for example, uh, and I think one of the most useful ways and useful examples here is in developing uh, timelines and uh, organizational structure for actually writing your grant. So remember that writing a research grant is a big project in and of itself, right? The actual research project, of course, requires project management, but the actual writing of the grant requires project management. And so you can use a tool like ChatGPT to help you develop a project management plan for your grant writing that considers your existing schedule, commitments, and so on and so forth, right? So you can create some efficiency and accountability using an AI tool for some of those uh, sort of peripheral activities um, beyond sort of the output of, of writing that can actually make your writing more efficient, but that don't, um, don't compromise the, the integrity or the proprietary nature of any of the writing that you're actually doing. So I think there's a really good example. Another one that I've used in, uh, in previous videos is uh, using an AI tool to help you identify funding opportunities that you may not have considered, whether that's at the local, state, or national level, especially if you are looking beyond federal funding sources, you might be able to use uh, an AI tool to help you identify some, uh, some alternative or new sources of funding that you haven't considered before. So again, if we think about writing more broadly, if we think about grant writing uh, and some of the other activities that are uh, involved in grant writing, AI tools can be useful uh, without sort of, again, compromising the integrity of the the actual writing output or or the input that you that you need to provide to um, to get anything useful from these AI tools. Uh, number three, uh, and this is sort of in some ways reiterating what we talked about in number one, and that is really protecting confidentiality and intellectual property. So remember that most of these tools. Uh, require that you, um, you know, that you provide inputs for them to use. And those inputs, uh, in the case of most research grants, would involve original work, proprietary work, and that these corporations uh, are retaining that original work and proprietary work and using it to train these models. And so you've just handed over your original work to a corporation that is using it to, to train its models. And so again, use at your own risk, 
uh, or don't don't use at your own risk, right? But just be really careful in thinking about how you're using these tools and uh, and whether that is um, first of all permitted by your institution and uh, whether that is something that you want to be doing. And and there are of course ways within a lot of these tools to prevent them from using that material to train the the AI tool. However, the uh, the the rules and the guidelines and the legality of that is still a bit nebulous. So again, I would just be really, really careful in providing any uh, original proprietary uh, information uh, to be to be used because we don't know how uh, how clear those guidelines are around um, protecting that information from being being used for training. So the last thing is to use AI for refinement and clarity rather than to solve the blank page problem. So in a lot of industries, AI is used to solve that blank page problem. So you have a blank page, you're not sure where to start, and you can use AI to, to help you uh, kind of get started with, with a, a writing project. But in my view, that is the absolute wrong way to use AI for research grant writing for all the reasons that we've talked about, right? You wanna retain that original deep thinking as the work that only you can do. And so you would use AI more on the refinement and clarity side of things, but again, very judiciously, very carefully, and in a really piecemeal way. And if you still have that blank page problem, that can be solved in other ways. So for example, in my grant funding formula program, we have templates that students can use that are really kind of fill in the blank to help you get started on clarifying the description of your research idea and the objectives and aims that you have, right? So using prompts to, to help you start thinking in that way is uh, doesn't require an AI tool. There are lots of resources available to you that can help you sort of prompt yourself, interrogate yourself to get that information out of you uh, in ways that, again, don't compromise your ability to think, which is one of your core functions as a researcher, right? So all of those elements need to be considered to use AI ethically and responsibly going forward. And again, this is the beginning of the conversation, not the end. Uh, we will continue this conversation in subsequent videos in this series, and we will revisit this series again and again uh, over time to refine uh, are thinking on how to use uh, AI in research grant writing uh, in an ethical and responsible way. So if you found this useful, definitely uh, subscribe to this channel so you can get the next videos in this series on AI. And uh, make sure that you sign up for my free resource library where we have lots of tools and resources in there to help you write a stronger grant application and to help you solve that blank page problem. So there you have it. We will see you next time.